when we were going through the ice fall, there was a bunch of rock fall coming down on us. And like, it, you, you know, you heard this like whomping, and you're like, oh, is that a helicopter? Like they can't be this high. And then you just hear like, and like impacts. And we're like, what the fuck? And so we're just like sitting ducks on the glacier trying to like find safety. Um, and we like couldn't film this cause we're like surviving. And I remember my camera was like right next to me and I was just like shaking and like couldn't think like, you know, we didn't have oxygen at this point either. So you're like feeling altitude sickness and stuff. And I'm just like, the effort to get the camera was too much of like, <laughs> I think I'm gonna die. <laughs> Is it necessary? I need to film this right now. Lotse was this perfect intersection of a big brand campaign where the North Face was launching this progressive waterproof fabric called Future Light. Hillary and Jim were going to go attempt to ski Lotse, um, and we kind of had planned photography around it. The Lotse project that you're talking about came together from the need to magnify it. I could feel the power behind what they were about to do. I mean, keep in mind, like, Hillary and Jim are two of the foremost epic athletes, so almost everything they do is, is like worth documenting. Jim and Hillary have this like affinity for climbing and skiing 8,000 meter peaks, and they're some of the best people in the world to do so. No one's ever skied the Lotse Coulard. It was so picturesque in that the line itself was aesthetically beautiful, like you had Everest in the backdrop. There were just like so many things that rose to the top that made it something that the team wants to like be a part of and like make happen. If you've looked at photos of the Lotse Coulard as a skier, it's really iconic. It's like a very natural thing to like look at that and be like, oh, like I want to ski that. The same way like I look at the moon and be like, oh, that'd be fun to like go up there. I got kind of the blessing to go figure out how we could put X amount of budget against going to capture more than just pictures. I called Hillary and was like, hey, I just want to run a couple ideas by you. Nothing's locked in stone, like, but just want to have, just putting some feelers out. How do you feel about Dutch Simpson joining you on your Lotse expedition? And she was like, Dutch? I love Dutch. Dutch. Has he ever been at altitude? Khaki from the North Face sent me a text and was like, hey, what are you doing the month of October? Jim and Hillary are going to Nepal. They want to ski Lotse. It's the first ski descent. You're going to go film it. And I was like, Wait, when are we leaving? She's like, in 10 days. There was almost zero pre-production and their primary goal was photos. And so Nick and I like shoot photos, but we're definitely filmmakers. And like, okay, we're going to capture what we can. We're going to go as far as we can like on the expedition. And so 10 days, I was like, all right, I'm gonna like start running. So I like, don't run. They had sent this like portable um, hyperbaric chamber that I had to like sleep in to help acclimate. 10 days leading up, I was, wasn't getting sleep because it was just like sleeping at altitude with this thing basically. And also with my girlfriend, I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna leave for <laughs> two months and I also have to sleep with this thing. I'll see you later. What's really, unique about the North Face is they treat their athletes with so much respect. It's not like, hey, we have a marketing initiative. We want you guys to do this. It's like truly athlete inspired. So the athletes are like, we have this crazy idea to go do whatever. In Jim and Hillary's case, like they want to go do Lotse. And what's rad about the North Face is they're like, yes, we want to support you. Like, what do you need? Nick and I were looking at it as like, this is Jim and Hillary's trip. It wasn't about us summiting, it was about us trying to capture as much as we could. And like the physical aspect of it was so gnarly. Like it's freezing, it's like hard to move, it's hard to breathe. Like everything feels heavier up there. You know, we're like almost to 28,000 feet and it, it's just like fucked up. <laughs> just went through the ice fall the first time. Hopefully we can just stay up here because I don't want to do that again. There's rocks flying past us that sound like fucking missiles. Um, so, I don't know, just eye-opening. We're in some real fucking mountains. 
That's all I got. There's just so many things you can't control that could kill you in that. Being in that position like really sucked. The first chunk from base camp to camp one, you have to go through the ice fall. And that's the most dangerous part. You have Everest right above you. You're going through this glaciated terrain that rolls off the mountains. Everything's trying to kill you. Like below there's crevasses, above there's rock and ice fall. There's also this, these like pillars of ice that could tip over at any time. And it doesn't matter like what time of day you go, like there's no safety. You just kind of like pray to whatever your God is and just like hope you make it. We were so close to camp too. The Sherpa had turned around. Jim and Hillary were like, we've been here, we know it. Like, let's just keep going. And so the Sherpa bailed. Nick and I were just like, what is happening? And we set up this little two person tent that all four of us climb into. And we're just gonna try to wait out the storm. And as we get in the tent, we just hear avalanches coming off Nupse, which is probably 7,000 feet above us. And we're just in, in the tongue of where that avalanche is coming. You can just hear the mountain releasing these slabs. And Jim's like cavalier, like, oh, let's just play cards, like trying to distract us. And like, we're just like, what the fuck? We are gonna die. After an hour or something, we were in the tent. We're like, we have to move. Like, we can't sit here. We're gonna get smoked. Pack up, leave a bunch of gear. We had a bunch of rope and um, like, just kind of cached a bunch of stuff there. And then just like blindly went up the glacier. started to clear up and we could see the summit of Everest and that was enough for Jim to get his bearings and we just like he kind of like followed his heart of like okay I think this is the route and we like made it right as the sun was setting to camp too and it was just like happy that we made it but one of those things of like I think we got really lucky so the next day we left a bunch of gear there we went back to get it and it all got swept into a crevasse and like slid so like had we stayed there longer it would have been game over. We kind of did a catch-all in regards to like capturing this narrative. We definitely didn't go out and being, being like, this is going to be a story about Jim. This is going to be a story about Hillary. This is a story. Let's go off and find it. I mean, I don't know what it's like to be at 8,000 meters. I don't know like what it feels to like uh, have a calling to ski this specific couloir. But like, I know what it's like to have a goal and to go after a goal. I know what it's like to have hardship and to overcome hardship. Distilling these super, seemingly superhuman achievements into like these values that people understand and people go through every day. That's was really our approach here with this story is that we wanted to make it comprehensible and by making it comprehensible, we wanted to show how like extraordinary it was. I think what we did was just like slow down the process. We knew it was gonna be physically demanding and in order to get the shots and the scenes that we needed, we knew we, knew we had to be pretty strategic about it. In the morning, Nick and I would group up and be like, all right, what's the one scene we wanna to shoot today? Or like, what if we did this, it was a success. So we just kind of like changed their, our normal way of operating into like, okay, like one thing. If we get away with one scene today, we're psyched. I mean, honestly, we didn't think we were gonna make it that far. Like expectations from Jim and Hillary were like, <laughs> if you can get to camp too, then like that's, we're happy with that. And so like, we kind of just took it as like day by day of like, okay, I feel good, you guys are good, you're healthy, you're feeling strong. I think ignorance is bliss. Like we didn't know exactly what we were getting into. And so just each day was like a new adventure of like, holy shit, that was kind of dangerous, but we're good, we're through it. Like, let's keep going. My final mark on the project was the full court press to have Nick and Dutch be the team who edited the film. And that was probably my most important contribution, was that these are the guys that we should trust with telling the story. I know they've got it, and they've got a great relationship with Hillary and Jim. They've got a great relationship with other athletes who can help contextualize the feat. They, they are the ones that got this content together, and, and they should be the ones to have the honor of putting the pieces together. 
Being able to tell stories that relate to the human condition through the lens of outdoors and through general exploration, being able to do that on like a broad scale for the masses is like, I think an important thing that the North Face can be a part of.